Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us for another information session for the 2023 Cecil New Signatures Art Competition. My name is Funzo Sidogi, a team member from the organizing team, and I'm here with Kate Tablanche. Hi everyone. Welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you here. Thanks, Funza. That's right. So uh, for those that might not know, the info session recordings that uh, myself and Kate are doing are meant to really assist potential entrants of the competition with information and insight into how you can get your artwork ready and and really ensure that you put your best foot forward uh, for the competition. Um, and today we are talking about something really, really important, which is about preparing your artwork for submission. A very, very important thing because so much of it depends on the way that you prepare your artwork and present it. But I think also the choice, the choices that you make. So I think that's also very important. You know, you really have to remember that um, you have to choose an artwork that really actually is going to show the judges that you are technically competent enough, but also that you have insight into the works that you're making, that your concept is good and everything. So that is actually one of the most important things is the preparation of your artwork and the choice of your artwork. That's right. And I, I like the point that you make there, Kate, the technical aspects. And that's what we'll mostly be dealing with today, because of course we cannot uh, give you insight into what you need to be making. You are the artist, you are the creator view. You guys are coming up with the brilliant ideas and the amazing stories and narratives that are part of your art making. But uh, our role in this uh, short discussion is to talk about the technical aspects and, and what you guys can can do to ensure that at least on that part, you do not uh, make some uh, silly mishaps that we've seen in the past that have uh, ended up in some quite interesting and brilliant artworks being thrown off the competition because uh, they did not adhere to, to some of the basic uh, technical requirements. So yes, uh, Kate, take it away. What do we address first? OK, so I think, you know, we've really spoken quite a lot in the previous session about, um, you know, a lot of the requirements and the restrictions, especially in terms of size and weight and everything. So um, I think in the interest of, you know, keeping this brief and to the point, we're not going to revisit those things. So please, right. I think that's the most important thing is remember there are a lot of restrictions. You need to be within those size restrictions, time limits and everything. Um, so um, if we go a little further, and we just think about the kinds of works that we always get. We normally get like three categories, four, four categories. Um, we get wall hanging works. We get installations and sculptures. Mm -hmm. um, we get works hanging from the ceiling and then obviously mm -hmm. the video works. So I think we're going to go through those yep. in, in, in a systematic way and then just discuss some of the points that you have to be aware of for each of those. So maybe the first um, one that we can talk about is wall hanging works and then we have framed works and unframed works so um and one of the requirements is that this has to be hang ready so maybe you can talk yeah. to us a little bit about what it means to be hang ready yeah and an important phrase that uh the artists will be hearing a lot not just from us uh, at the competition but in any future artistic endeavors that they might have where they are engaging with a gallery or are wanting to exhibit at an art fair um, the organizers there or the curators there will say your artwork has to be hang ready and that's if obviously it is a two-dimensional work that is supposed to be seen from from the wall so we, we already stated previously that the entrance have to be aware that the um, Pretoria Art Museum where the final exhibition will take place makes use of a rod hanging system which means that you need to make provision when uh, finalizing your artwork for it to be hanging from the wall um, using the rod system. Um, unfortunately uh, the 
art museum does not accept any uh, or any of the submission points does not accept any kind of drilling into the walls that will be done um, for for wall, wall hanging works so this means that if you have a painting whether it's on a canvas um, or on a board um, you need to make provision uh, for it to have some kind of string uh, attached to the back of it that will enable it to hang from the wall now how you go about doing that is of course up to you there are various options one of the options is to frame your artwork but this is not always necessary um, because what we've often uh, discovered and maybe Kate you can speak to this is that sometimes artists uh, try and frame their own works um, and uh, yeah yep Yes, it's, uh, framing is a very expensive exercise and so and, and we're very aware of that. So we don't say that it has to be, but if you decide that you're not going to frame your work, you need to make sure still that, you know, it still looks presentable and that we are still able to hang it. Mm. So um, we would suggest that you use bull clips and if you go onto the website, there are some information resources that actually show those uh, images and everything of all the, the things that you can actually use, the like bull clips that you can use to hang that um, and then just use another piece of cardboard or a thin piece of wood to like to support it. Um, it's not ideal. The artists actually need to know that um, because those works aren't protected, they often get damaged. Mm. Um, and, you know, even just in transit and everything, you know, it's not even when when we're looking at it. So before they even arrive at the at the selection point, they could have been damaged. So um, it's not ideal. But if you don't have the resources to frame a work, it's it's a better option. We've often seen artists actually constructing their own um, sort of like frames mm -hmm. as well. And I would really actually say, um, you know, try and avoid that as far as possible. The thing is that the artwork, um, when we look at that, it actually, it doesn't end at the edge of the work. Mm -hmm. It actually ends at the end of the frame. That's right, the frame so is part of it. You so whatever mm. you put around the artwork mm. forms part of it eventually. Mm. And if you have a homemade frame and it's a bit skew or, you know, it's it's really not good, it actually does a lot more harm than good. So yeah. rather if you don't have the if you don't have this resources for that, rather opt for an unframed one, but make sure that it's still able to hang using those ball clips and things. That's right. And Kate, you, you bring up, so just to close off that part around the, the framing, you bring up something really important, which is ensuring that your work is ready for transit yes. uh, and uh, to be packaged properly. Again, and this, um, I can give this example from last year in 2022 uh, in Quebec, where there was a, a ceramic work that was accepted into the competition, but then the candidate did not make in uh, good enough uh, provision in terms of its um, transportation, the packaging for transportation, and the work subsequently broke and therefore could not be exhibited at the final show and even though it had made it through the the uh, regional judging round and that is so unfortunate so please uh, especially for works that are not going to be framed make sure that you 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 make provision that it will be adequately covered that if it's a drawing you use fixative spray or any kind of spray that will ensure that it does not smudge uh, all of these considerations are important it's it's not just uh, getting your work to be exhibited at the original judging round and that's it actually even what happens after that um, forms part and parcel of how your artwork is going to be looked at um, and so i think we we can we can move on from there. there there's so much more that we could say uh, but um, kate brings up an important point that please uh, engage with uh, the website the the new signatures website because because there's some important um, information there that can assist you in this regard. Right, so um, then if we look at installations and sculptures, um, this is actually quite a, <laughs> sometimes quite a tricky thing. 
Yeah. Um, so maybe you can talk to us about some of the, the things that artists should keep in mind when they when they want to submit installations and sculptures. Yes. So so the first point that I'll make is actually related to, to the to the last one around packaging and transit is is to understand that when you put out your 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 sculptural work or your installation, there must be instruction, clear instruction to the curators and the competition organizers that this is how this work needs to be packaged and packed um, for transit. So that is absolutely essential. The other part, of course, especially around sculptures is um, traditionally uh, sculpture has been one of those um, mediums within art making where the artwork had to be durable. It had to uh, survive the test of time, as it were. That's why artists were, were prone to using stone uh, or bronze, really materials that could withstand weather, um, and could just uh, withstand any kind of, of uh, environmental de degradation. So I, I, I say this so that uh, art, uh, artists can understand that when you are submitting a, a sculpture, it, it has to, in some respect, still adhere to, to that tradition. Um, sometimes we, we, we find these sculptures that are that are really well done, but then certain components are falling over. Um, and if, if that's not part and parcel of, of the of the concept of the work, uh, I mean, we do understand that there'll be certain type of installation, maybe that involves sand being being packed in a certain way and so on. But if, if it's a sculpture that is meant to be sturdy, that's meant to stand, um, please ensure that it does. Uh, please even before um, it, it comes to one of the submission sites, make sure that um, if, if, if a person walks past it, it does not fall over. <laughs> we often find that happening as well. And it is, it is so unfortunate um, uh, when, we, when, that does it, when that happens with sculptural work. Uh, and again, I, I, I'm, we are saying this knowing that not all sculptures are meant to be durable. Some, some artists do create uh, installation or sculpture work that is ephemeral, uh, we understand that, but that then has to be part and parcel of the concept and, and it has to be communicated very clearly through the artist statement so that the judges understand that that is meant to be. Uh, uh, but that's that's all I can say around the, the sculptural work at, at the moment. It's really ensure that you, you really mm -hmm understand the tradition of, of sculpting uh, when, when you are making that, that work so that uh, on the technical side, it, it really passes all of the, the basic tests uh, yes. that, that, that is expected of a sculpture. I think one thing that I'd like to highlight as well is the, the use of um, plinths. So um, the museum, the Pretoria Art Museum actually does have plinths. Mm. Um, so, you know, you are able, we are able to use those, but I think there's something that artists should actually also really consider when they are making sculptures is as the frame is when it comes to a wall hanging work, so too the plinth actually forms part of the artwork. That's right. Um, and you can actually use that to your benefit if you want to exploit it a bit further and, you know, think about how the plinth can actually extend the meaning of the work, you can do that. Um, otherwise, you know, if you do opt um, to go with the plants that are um, supplied, then obviously also you need to, you know, just look at the way that your work is going to sit on 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 that plant. You know, mm -hmm. is it, you know, um, is it going to fit on there? You know, the size requirements and all those kind of things. So, so just something else to to keep in mind when it comes to sculptures. Completely, completely. Yeah. And if you want to have it on the floor or whatever, you know, that's also great. You know, if it forms part of the um, the concept, yeah. you know, by all True. means. But then, you know, it, it's very also very important. Those instructions, the assembly instructions and everything need to actually clarify all those kind of um, points. And uh, so that's why it's very important to make sure that that document also accompanies your work. Right. So then we can maybe move on to the um, works hanging from the ceiling, though we've seen quite a lot of those actually <laughs> in the last couple of years. So yeah. I, and, and again here, technically the the same 
issues that we brought up on uh, works hanging from the wall um, is that you need to ensure that whatever system hanging system that you are utilizing is sturdy um, I, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's actually a matter of safety more than anything because yes. the last thing that you you want is an artwork uh, hanging from the wall that then falls uh, either on a, a, a viewer, uh, someone that is visiting the gallery. Um, it it could really potentially be be harmful. Um, so again, we are we are quite strict on that to ensure that um, first and foremost safety is adhered to when it comes to works that are hanging from the ceiling, and also again the the consideration that if it's hanging. Um, it is open to movement, um, so that obviously it will be inside a, a, a hole that is, is closed off, um, but there will be air nonetheless, right? And so as it's hanging, uh, what, what, what happens when, when it's moved around? Um, the artists really need to consider that, and, and the really good works that have uh, have done well in the in in the past have actually played around with that um, and made it part and parcel of the art making where the movement uh, some works create sound as 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 they move um, and the judges absolutely uh, thought that was that was novel so again um, it, it's about understanding that when you are using a hanging device, uh, you need to account for the environmental factors um, as well. Um, and, and, and do you want people to walk through your work when it's hanging? Uh, uh, if it's hanging, at what level do you want them to see it? Do you want them to see it at eye level? Do you want to drop it so that they look down on it? Do you want them to look up? All of these considerations are absolutely critical for, for works that are hanging from the ceiling. But more than anything, it's on. It's it's really about the safety dimension, especially if it's it's a it's a heavy work or it's it's an object that if it falls, um, it it might create uh, uh, damage or break. Um, that 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 is definitely uh, critical. Um, I think there are quite a lot of resources also on the website. You know that actually show exactly. Um, what the ceiling looks like and how um, those works can actually be hooked on where they have to be hooked on and so forth. Yeah, so how I, high the ceiling is, yes, you know, so yes, that they yes. can they yeah, can gauge yeah. uh, at what point uh, or how long their uh, their rod or string needs to be. Yeah. So just to emphasize again, I think um, it's important just for artists to remember that not all the regional collection points can actually accommodate those works hanging from the ceiling. So if the artist actually wants to do that, they need to actually just, you know, um, make contact with the collection point and ask them, you know, yeah. can I do this? Um, is it, you know, do you, do you have the facilities to accommodate that? If they can't, you have to um, submit a digital photographic um, entry. For, for that and then it will be judged on that. So yeah, exactly. cool. And then um, probably one of my favorite ones, um, performance art and video works. I <laughs> love watching the video works. There's always <laughs> something exciting going on yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you can just talk to us about things that, that artists should bear in mind when, they, when they're producing their works. That's right. So yesterday we are uh, not yesterday, but in, in uh, one of the previous recordings, we we covered uh, the aspect of the length of the recording uh, or the length of your of your video work uh, that it cannot go above five minutes or 300 seconds. So that's obviously that's a non negotiable. But when it comes to the technicalities of it and, and again, this this kind of touches on, on what we've said about the, the other types of, of works that can be submitted is to ensure the, that you adhere to, to the quality um, that is expected of a video work. So if you are producing a video, we are expecting that um, even the video quality will be, will be high. Um, 
again, not unless if uh, it's part and parcel of the artwork that you want to produce something that is pixelated, uh, that that's also fine. But please ensure that the, the quality of the video is actually up to, to scratch. Also, if your video has sound, please ensure that it's actually audible, that we can hear it. Um, we, we often struggle sometimes where there is this fantastic um, uh, video where there's a little bit of a dialogue between uh, individuals on that on that video, but we can't hear the dialogue um, or we can't hear the, the sound properly or there's an unnecessary sound that is there, <laughs> uh, whether it's the sound of wind or whatever it may be, that does not really work with the images that we're seeing on the video. Um, so we understand that um, not all artists can obviously afford professional editing uh, services from, from someone who's an editor, but uh, with, with whatever you can do, there, there are some amazing programs these days that uh, one can utilize to, to edit uh, videos. So whatever the artist um, is able to access, whatever resource the artist is able to access to ensure that that, that video submission is, is really high quality, the same way that we don't want a, a drawing that is smudged unnecessarily. We also do not want to see video submissions that are lacking just in terms of those basic uh, technical requirements uh, because again it, it, it takes away from whatever interesting uh, work has been done or content that has been produced within the video. Mm, absolutely. And I think also important um, if an artist is wanting to submit a work that has a digital component that's not necessarily just a video work, um, they need to also ensure that all those digital, if they're going to be including a laptop projection um, onto an artwork or, you know, whether the laptop We've seen a couple of those in the last couple mm -hmm. of years. Very exciting works. Mm -hmm. um, all those those digital components need to be working, um, and you need to provide all all the elements. You know the the extension cords and whatever is necessary, um, and make sure that your um, all your equipment is working properly. So, um, you know that's that's also a very important point. Yeah, uh, uh, although uh, we should mention that the Petra Art Museum does make provision for 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 video projections. So for for those that only just want to submit the the the, the finished video uh, on a USB, yes, we yes. we still welcome that. But uh, what uh, you are talking about, of course, is where the 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 video is part of an installation, installation of, other, yes. of other digital yes. uh, uh, equipment. Then, unfortunately, the entrant has to provide that. Um, so, as we draw to a conclusion, we we are obviously not able to cover all the technicalities uh, that are related to the types of artworks that uh, we we might be receiving. The, the most important point that we, we can make here is just for you to ensure that when you are submitting your work, it is finished. And it is, it is once it gets out of your hands, um, you have provided the right type of packaging, the right type of instruction that it can go to another part of the world without you being there and it can be exhibited and it can be shown. That's, that's really the mark of a, of a really well-resolved, uh, artwork that is uh, hang ready or presentation ready uh, that does not require you to to be there providing instructions or fixing things. Um, if if that's the case, then then perhaps you need to to revise the type of work that that you're making. A, a really a finished product means that it can get out of your hands and and exist in another part of the world um, without it losing its artistic integrity. Yeah, well, for me, I think um, it's, it's important for artists really to, to to think about the quality of the work that they're going to be submitting. So not only must they showcase the technical abilities, but also the, the work needs to be something that shows us, wow, this person actually has considered every single aspect, the, not only the work, the presentation, um, the way that I present it, the statement, the way I talk about it, everything. Um, and I think that's that's actually very, very important. You know, just, um, you know, like when, when 
you're looking for a boyfriend or a girlfriend or something, <laughs> you really want to show yourself to the best. So you do everything. You do the That's hair, right. the makeup, everything. <laughs> and in the same way, what we're looking at here is, you know, we want to show the artwork. So you've got to look at the met, you know, the personality, the hair, the makeup, everything. Everything's got to be working <laughs> together. And then hopefully you got it made. <laughs> yeah. If we put it differently, when when we do judge that these artworks, we both we both judge the the contents of the book and the cover of the book. So absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Um, uh, as we always state, please uh, add your questions to the chat box, uh, and we will uh, happily engage with uh, whatever queries you may have. Um, and we look forward to you joining us for future information sessions, uh, where we I think the next one will be dealing with the the importance of the artist statement and the the bio of the artist, what, what we are like, uh, looking for there. So please join us. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.